Hey guys, my name is Toby and welcome back to another exciting Photoshop tutorial. Now, today we're going to be talking about something which is very cool and it is called frequency separation. Now, that sounds horrifying, but it is actually not that bad. Uh, and once I kind of explain to you what it is and what it does, I can imagine you're going to be using this a lot more often. It's something that I have started doing to a lot of my work, uh, but it's not something that every photo needs. It is very much a case of when it's called for. Um, but basically what this will do is it will help you give, uh, give your portraits that extra edge. If you aren't quite so familiar with Photoshop, this is quite an advanced technique, so you may want to come back to this another time. But uh, assuming that you're happy to proceed, let's crack on. Now, there are a couple of things to be aware of before you start doing this, and the first of which is that this is something you want to do fairly late into your workflow. Uh, this is something I would probably do maybe two or three steps from the, the very end. Uh, it is not something that you want to start out with. Um, so any spot healing or anything like that, any color corrections, that sort of thing, you're going to want to do first. Um, I wouldn't do sharpening before you do this. Sharpening is something that if you're going to do it, you can do afterwards. So the very first thing we need to do for this technique is to duplicate our layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate our layer twice. And there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, it will give me a background layer for me to refer back to so you can kind of see a before and after. Uh, secondly, there is also a slightly more practical reason, uh, which I will come on to a bit later. But for now, um, the easiest way to duplicate our background layer is to press Command or Control if you're on the PC. Uh, and J, and we're going to hit that twice, and now we've got three copies of our layer. Okay, uh, the one thing you might want to do is to rename your layers, uh, because it'll be slightly easier to find them later on in the process. Uh, so I wouldn't normally even bother renaming my layers, I'm really bad about that, but this is one instance where it's actually not a bad suggestion. So the top layer, we're going to call this uh, Detail, and the second layer, we're going to call this color and we're going to leave the background layer as the background layer. Now, the next step is you need to turn off the top layer and we're going to go to our color layer and we need to go to filter, blur, ooh, blur and Gaussian blur. Now, what we're going to try and do is you basically need to blur it enough that you can't see any more detail, but you can still recognize the picture if that makes sense. So, for instance, that's not enough because you can still, it's blurred, but you can still see detail. And that's way too much because it's barely recognizable as a face. So you're probably looking more like somewhere kind of around about here. Uh, it will vary from picture to picture and kind of what resolution you're shooting at and that sort of thing. So you kind of just have to eyeball it. Uh, but if you look at this, you can still see her face fairly well, but um, if you look through the sort of little loop view, um, there's no textures anywhere. All you can really see is just blotches of color, which is what we want. So I'm going to hit OK to that. And now we're going to turn back on our detail layer. I'm going to select our detail layer. And now we're going to use a tool in Photoshop, which is very rarely used, which is um, found by going to Image and Apply Image. Now, Apply image is this weird little tool dialogue um, that will effectively let you kind of bake in a blend mode to a layer. So this is quite good. So let's say you wanted to um, apply an overlay, but then you're looking at that going, it would be really good if I could then also multiply that layer with a different blend mode and do it that way. So you can have two blend modes effectively. Um, and this is one way of doing that. It's a very odd tool. It's not something you use very often. In fact, this is the only technique really where I would ever use it. Um, but let's carry on. Now, this is conveniently actually already set up for me, but what it might normally do is you need to select the layer that it's going to be applied to. So what we're trying to do is apply the detail layer to the color layer. So you need to select the color layer. Uh, channel RGB is fine. And then you pick your blend mode, which in this case, and every case I will point out, will be the subtract blend mode. Now, one reason we go about doing it this way, rather than just selecting down there, is you may notice that you don't actually have add and subtract down here. Um, so you have to kind of do it up in this menu. So we want subtract. 
And then you need to set the values of the tool to scale to and offset 128, opacity 100%. Um, the reason for those settings, uh, I'm not sure. They were worked out by somebody far cleverer than I am. Uh, but no matter what image you're using or what you're doing, it's these settings every single time. So it's always 2 and 128 and subtract, and that's that. And if you've done it right, you should have what looks like uh, a sort of a grey image with an outline of your picture on it. I'm going to hit OK. And this looks pretty good. We could probably stop here, um, but I think we will carry on. Um, so to get this to look a little bit more uh, picture-like, we need to change our blend mode from our detail layer. So this is when I said it's a case of using two blend modes kind of at once. So we've got a subtract blend mode, and now we're going to blend that blend mode. And we need to do that using linear light. So we tick that. And what you're going to notice is that we're kind of back where we started. So if I just hold down Alt to solo the background layer, which hasn't been changed, um, there's no difference. It's exactly the same as our original starting image. So this is good. So far, we've gotten nowhere. Brilliant. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to select our color layer and we're going to start the magic. Um, what we've effectively done is we've separated out the detail information in our picture, so all the texture and sort of fine hairs and everything like that, and the color information. Now, this will let us do a couple of cool things. If you've ever tried to do skin smoothing or something like that, what you may find is that you kind of either have to clone in um, a lot of repeated detail, which looks a bit meh and it's not very good, um, or you end up with this like really, really, really too smooth effect where there's no detail, and you can have a number of problems that can make skin smoothing look really amateur. But this is one way of doing it, which is the absolute bee's knees. So, uh, what you're gonna actually do is, rather than trying to smooth out the detail, you're gonna smooth out the color. Uh, and what we need to do is we need to select our freehand lasso tool, and then you need to apply some feathering. So that's probably about right. And we're just going to select, uh, with freehand, just some areas of the face that don't have detail in. So what I'm trying to avoid are things like her hair, and then there's like a line there in her face and a couple of lines there. And this isn't, if you do it over these, you're going to make it just look really weird. So you want kind of clear patches of skin. And with our feathered selection, which has got the feathering there, you're going to go up to filter, blur. Gaussian Blur. I should point out this is the color layer, not the detail layer we're working on. So we're going to go to Gaussian Blur. And you don't want to overdo it. If you overdo it, it will look like this. And I don't think anybody really wants that. So you're probably looking more around sort of 20, 25 pixels. But again, this will vary depending on the image. And it's kind of a case of doing it to taste. Um, you're not particularly looking for anything um, because it's going to be it's it's quite a subtle change uh, but bear with me so I'm going to deselect now I'm going to highlight kind of around her nose now if you haven't changed the keyboard shortcut um, if you go to filter you can actually reapply the same uh, or the previous filter with the exact same settings uh, by hitting Command or Control if you're on the PC and F, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit Control F or Command F and then Control D or Command D to deselect. And I'm just going to do her forehead and Command F. And we'll come around here, kind of avoiding that detail. Command F and we'll go under her nose. And then we'll just do her, oops, just do around here as well. There we go. And you may notice I'm not being particularly precise with this because you don't really need to be. Now, doesn't look very different, does it? Watch what happens when I solo back on the background layer so we can kind of see a before and after. I don't know if you can see, let's zoom in a bit. So if I solo the background layer on, that's before and that's after. If you look at kind of all the detail in this skin 
and like all the detail on her nose and things like that, it's actually smoothing out an awful lot of these details and imperfections. It is giving the skin a much kind of smoother, softer look, but it's a very subtle change. Now, what you could have done is you could have sat here and each of these little sort of bumps and things, you could have um, individually photoshopped those out and it could have taken you hours and hours, or you can do this. The thing is, it's not so much the detail that's the problem, it's the fact that it, they're, they're a different color, they're a bit darker and a different color. So if you just change the color information, you kind of blur it all together and smudge it all together, you actually kind of soften up a lot of these uh, blemishes. And you know, it's pretty epic. And one other thing you can do with it, so if we go back to our color layer, is sometimes you get people with like hot spots on their face and that sort of thing. What you can actually do is if we just kind of go around this highlight here on her nose, and we got to uh, gorge and blur again, but we're gonna actually use a slightly more severe blur. So something something like 60, and then deselect. Uh, what you're gonna see is that you can actually kind of get rid of a lot of these highlights and a lot of these hot spots. Um, you know, and there's quite a lot to be said about that, I think. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this uh, with three layers rather than two is because, um, particularly I notice when you do this effect on men, it can actually be a little bit overdone. You can actually make it look a little bit too smooth, a little bit too soft and feminine. Um, and again, more so with men, that's something that's quite undesirable. Um, and I think as a general rule with editing, something you should always try to go for is subtlety. You don't want to overdo anything. If it looks photoshopped, that's bad. <laughs> you should, every picture you ever finish, it should be like you didn't touch it. That is the sign of a good editor, in my opinion. Um, for this type of work anyway, I mean, obviously there's more advanced uh, people who do ridiculous things where you go, oh, well, that's obviously Photoshop, but it's very cool. But this kind of thing, where it's like a natural looking headshot or a natural photo, you don't want it to look like you've actually done anything. That's the trick. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our detail and our color layer and I'm gonna group them together by pressing Command G. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our group and I'm gonna actually turn the opacity down. And what this will do is it will kind of fade in the effect. So you can kind of see, it's particularly obvious on her nose where I've gotten rid of that highlight. Um, but it is just a case of, it's just kind of softening up what I've done um, it's not making it quite as fierce an effect. And this is, you know, very much a good thing. Um, if you let some of the natural colors and things that were there anyway come back through, all you've really done is you've kind of reduced um, a lot of these blemishes and things like that, which I think gives a much more pleasing look. Now, there is one final thing that I'm going to do to this image, and that is to sharpen it. Now, rather than just going to um, sharpen and applying a filter, uh, there is a slightly, mm, slightly cleverer way of doing it, I think, uh, and that is to do it with um, a high pass filter. Now, to do this, what I'm gonna do is rather than um, duplicate one of these. I'm going to duplicate kind of everything as a whole uh, by doing a stamp layer, which is Command, Alt, Shift, E. And that has given us basically a copy of everything that the computer can see. So everything that is visible to us, it's gone, well, we're going to put that in one layer. It's kind of the same thing as like flattening it um, and just getting a layer of that, but it's just uh, added another layer on top. And what I'm going to do to this is we're going to go to Filter, Other, High Pass, uh, and what we want to do is we want to just kind of get the high pass where you can just about start to see kind of bits of detail coming through. So probably no more than that might even be a bit fierce. Let's do like 2.5. Okay. Uh, so we want to do that. And then we're going to take this and then we're going to go to overlay. And then we just bring the opacity down a little bit. And that's just going to... Uh, so hopefully you're going to be able to see this on the video, but that has just put a little bit of sharpening uh, onto our image. Um, but it's done it in a slightly more natural way, I think, than um, a lot of uh, the sharpening algorithms will. 
So, that is just about going to do it, I think, guys. Uh, my name is Toby. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.